Well, joining us now from Kiel in the UK is Sharon George, who's a senior lecturer in environmental science at Kiel University. Good to have you back on the program, uh, Sharon. Firstly, Batsurai is Southern Africa's second biggest cyclone so far this year. We're barely into 2022. We're seeing more and more of these extreme weather events. What's the link between the rising occurrence of these weather shocks and the climate crisis? Okay, what, what the link really comes back to our actions our production of co2 in the in the atmosphere and what this is doing is creating a blanket of this active chemically active gas that interacts with the heat that would normally be reflected back out to space and it's trapping that in and causing this greenhouse effect and it's heating things up and it's that global heating that's creating instability in systems that have been really stable for some time. So we've had really stable weather systems. We've had we've got really stable ocean currents, but we're 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 messing with that those systems that 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 you know cycle heat around the planet. So what we're seeing is areas that would normally see patterns of rainfall, those are being disrupted and we're seeing more heavy rainfall in areas that we wouldn't normally see that. We're seeing drought in areas and more extended droughts. And those extremes of temperatures are being driven. And, and what's exacerbating this is where we see this, this coupled with um, periods of drought plus periods of, of higher temperature. And then when we are getting wildfires, that's being driven with higher winds because these systems are becoming much more powerful. So what we're seeing are increases in averages of, of extreme events. So we're seeing more and more records being, being broken. And this is pushing the ability of our systems to cope with these pressures. So we're seeing more flooding. We're seeing much more pressure on, on the environment in terms of being able to cope with this deluge of water that, that we're just not, are not able to cope with. So we're seeing levels of, of sea rise rise be, and more flooding in land because of this, this constant you know, sort of rise and in instability in, in the planet systems. And we're seeing the impact of this that we've been talking about, you know, we've been predicting through models, but now we're actually starting to see these events playing out. And, you know, and, and sadly, this is impacting on people's lives, people's ability to make a living um, and risks to, you know, people through natural disasters. The cruel reality about the climate crisis is that uh, global heating is being driven mainly by rich nations that are emitting the most carbon pollution, yet it's poorer countries like Madagascar that are bearing the brunt of it, countries also in uh, the middle of oceans that are experiencing yeah. rising sea levels. Oh, do you think it is the responsibility of richer nations to help poorer countries mitigate the effects of the climate crisis? Absolutely, because it is those countries that have the, the least ability and least control over the climate, um, over this, this production of emissions often, that are the most vulnerable on the planet. And so, you know, and these are people that are contributing to this problem the least. So these are people who's, who, you know, we're seeing coastal villages of, of farmers, we're seeing people in, in towns and cities where, they're, they have no ability to, or they haven't got the infrastructure or funding to cope or to put any resilience into any of this. And, you know, those richer nations that are doing the consuming and producing these emissions do need to take some responsibility for that by cutting emissions and sharing technology to cut, to, to prevent other nations producing and going down the same route, but also in terms of mitigating some of these impacts and protecting the lives of some of these people in some of the most vulnerable areas on the planet. Okay, so Sharon George. Uh, it was yeah. really good to get your analysis. Thanks as always for joining us on the News Hour.